Hey everyone, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, some of the possible outcomes of our conclusions when we do our hypothesis testing and how sometimes we can make a good decision and sometimes how we can make an incorrect decision. Okay, so I have this little grid up here and it represents all possible outcomes of our conclusions. So our conclusion could, we can either say that we reject the null hypothesis if our p-value was small or we could fail to reject our null hypothesis if our p-value is big. So that, that's something that we can do based upon the results of our exam, or of our testing. Now, what we don't know is that some omniscient being there out there knows, though, if the null hypothesis is actually true or if the null hypothesis is actually false. We don't know these two things. Uh, we only can, you know, we make this decision here. Now, let's say that we reject the null hypothesis but the null hypothesis is actually correct. If that happens, we make what is known as a type one error. And we know this symbolically as what is represented as alpha. So if we make a type one error, Let's do let's draw a picture over here of what that actually looks like. And let's put up a null and alternative hypothesis just so that we have some sort of baseline to work from. So let's say that the null hypothesis is that mu equals mu naught. And we'll have the alternative hypothesis be equal to mu is greater than Okay, let's get a picture up so that we can see what this type 1 error actually is. Okay, so let's get our kind of sampling distribution up here. And we will say that mu naught is right here. And let's do this is our rejection region and X bar lands right there okay so we would reject the null hypothesis but the null hypothesis really is in fact true that the hypothesized mean is the actual mean now, is that possible it's like yes this is totally possible Whenever we're taking samples, sometimes it's possible to just get a weird result. It's possible to get an average that is very, very high. Now, what, when we set our alpha level, we're saying, you know what, we are going to be willing to make this type 1 error, or we are willing to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true 5% of the time, or 10% of the time, or whatever alpha that, that we want to, to set it at. And we just have to be, we have to understand that sometimes we are going to make this type 1 error where we are rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually, uh, is actually true. And weird, weird samples, they happen sometimes. Um, but we want our alpha level to, you know, to be relatively small so that if we were to repeat this study over and over and over and over again, most of the time, uh, if the null hypothesis is actually true, we're not going to be rejecting the null hypothesis or we're, we're not going to get some, some false positive uh, result. Okay, so that is kind of step one. If we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Now let's suppose that the null hypothesis is actually false. Okay, so let's say instead that the true mean there's our hypothesized mean. Let's say that the true mean is actually following this. So if we just kind of continue the number line, is actually following this distribution. And that the true mean is right here. The hypothesized mean is over there. And we got a result out here. And we rejected the null hypothesis. Is that a good decision? The answer is yeah. If we reject the null hypothesis, when the null hypothesis is actually false, we have made a good decision. That is, that's something that we actually want to do. 
Okay, so in this scenario now, let me erase our type one error because we're not talking about that guy anymore. Okay, so let me erase this down too and we'll go back to just our first and original distribution. Okay, now suppose that we still have our little distribution like this. We've got our p-value here. Or sorry, this will be our alpha. And let's say that we got our x bar to be here. Notice how our x bar is not inside of our rejection region, and so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, we said that hey, the null hypothesis, oh, the null hypothesis is still true. And this is once again a good decision. We have, or our test has correctly ascertained that this is a that the null hypothesis, that we failed to reject the null hypothesis because we didn't land in our rejection region, and the null hypothesis is actually true. So that's a good decision. Okay, so one more thing that, that we need to do. Uh, and it's when we fail to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually false. Okay, so let's go back and let's draw this distribution again. So we will say that the true mean isn't here. And we'll say that the true mean, we'll draw our little distribution out again, is actually something like this. Where this is where the true mean actually lies. Okay, so we see that we've got our mean here because the null hypothesis is false. The true mean is actually way bigger. Okay, now we don't know what this kind of orange, goldish uh, distribution is. This is only some omniscient being actually knows what this is. All that we know is we know this null hypothesis and we've got our sampling distribution and we've got our X bar right here. Now notice how our X bar is not in the rejection region. We would fail to reject the null hypothesis um, because the data that we collected did not suggest that it was different from what the hypothesized mean actually was. This is what we call a type two error. And we call this guy beta. OK, so to calculate beta, I'm going to get this blue in. So from where our rejection re our region started, kind of where that alpha level part is, what we do is now on this true distribution, it's the area under the curve in blue. So that, that is what our beta is, or the beta is, is like the probability that we are going to uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually false. Uh, so we want this beta to be as small as possible, uh, just like how we wanted alpha to be as small as possible. Um, and there are, there are some ways that we can kind of manipulate the sizes on that, on how big beta and alpha actually are. Um, the, the best way to handle beta and alpha, if you're really worried about it, is to increase your sample size. Increasing your sample size will, will decrease, um, will, will, will decrease how often uh, you are, are going to be making, um, or you're going to be rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true and when you are going to be uh, failing to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually false. We can kind of minimize those uh, by increasing our sample size. Um, 
so yeah, so those are the differences between those, between our type one and our type two error. And we often talk about this right here. It's called power. We want our hypothesis testing to be powerful, or where we are, um, where we are rejecting the null hypothesis uh, when we actually need to, and we are. And so, in order to do that, it is to calculate how powerful our test is. Is it's one minus beta, and we want our yeah we want our test to be as powerful as they possibly can. Now the trick with actually calculating out power is that we need to know what the true mean is, uh, but most of the time we actually we don't know what the true mean, uh, the, what the true mean is. Uh, and so what actually winds up, winds up happening is we have some, uh, some calculations where we're working on like effect size and some other, uh, some other variables and equations that, that we take into account. But for us, what I want us to really understand and know is that what a type 2 error is, it's that when we are failing to reject the null hypothesis, when the null hypothesis is actually false, that that value is called beta. That just graphically, uh, it's if the null hypothesis is false, so this is the true distribution here. We've kind of landed, we, we had a weird result that just made it look like that it was in line with what the null hypothesis actually was doing. And then that we want our tests to be powerful, and that is just 1 minus beta. So if I give you what the power of a test is, you could, you could tell me what the beta value is, or you know, vice versa. And if we want to minimize our beta, if we want to, if we want to minimize beta, we want to increase uh, our sample size. Uh, so anyhow, this is kind of our table of all of the possible outcomes. We're trying to avoid type 1 and type 2 errors, and we're trying to make these correct decisions uh, where we're, we are rejecting when the null hypothesis is false, and we are failing to reject when the null hypothesis is actually true.